Hi, I'm Kendrick Johnson. I'm a third year medical student at Toro University, Nevada. And this video is aimed at uh, third and fourth year medical students looking for a quick overview of common arrhythmias. This uh, is based on review materials, so it's uh, intended for uh, a, a review of uh, common arrhythmias in preparation for uh, step two of the boards or step three of the boards. So, uh, common arrhythmias are uh, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, multifocal atrial tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia, which encompasses some of the others we talked about, uh, VTAC and VFib. And just as a, a brief overview, I wanted to talk about from a primary care physician perspective, what are some basic guidelines for sending people to the ER? You know, some of these uh, rhythms can be handled in your office, but uh, but you want to have some guidelines of when to when to get the people out of your office and somewhere where they can get a little bit better care. So, any person with an arrhythmia with a new syncope or ne near syncope uh, that that you don't know how to deal with, you want to send to the ER probably right away. Sustained wide complex rhythms other than uh, a known um, bundle branch block. Those are people that should go to the ER. If you just don't know what the diagnosis is and the, the symptoms seem threatening, it's pretty much a no-brainer. And uh, patients with heart disease that uh, present with new symptoms. And uh, if you have a supraventricular tachycardia that you can't break with some of the ways that we'll talk about in a minute. And AFib or flutter with rapid or slow rates. Also, if you uh, if this is an emergent situation, so these people have stable vital signs uh, um, and are relatively asymptomatic, but... Uh, they're candidates for getting a pacemaker or for any type of antiarrhythmic drug. Up to date suggests that uh, antiarrhythmics be handled completely by cardiologists. Of course, uh, that section was written by cardiologists, so I don't know if there's a bias there, but for me, I think I'll be happy to send all those out to a cardiologist to take care of. And then any kind of a, a catheter ablation procedure or, or a pacemaker, of course, you're not going to be doing those in your office. So, But if you think that uh, your patient could benefit from one of these, then you want to send them to a specialist. So AFib, when I think of the causes for AFib, it's easy for me to remember because I happen to be extremely frightened by pirates. So uh, pirates make my heart shake. And uh, so pulmonary disease, ischemia, rheumatic heart disease, anemia, thyrotoxicosis, ethanol, and sepsis. That spells pirates, and those are some of the causes of AFib. So there's two ways that these people will present to you. Uh, one of them might, might just be uh, you'll see it on an EKG and they didn't know they had it. They might be uh, having some... Uh, some vague symptoms, or, or some people are doing screening EK, EKGs, and you might pick something up like this. But uh, some people you might be working up for uh, chest discomfort, palpitations, uh, hypotension, syncope, tachycardia, and so you run an EKG and you see a very characteristic uh, wiggly little line uh, with no discernible P waves and an irregularly irregular rhythm. So that's pretty much diagnostic for uh, AFib. Some complications, uh, I, I mean the complication of AFib is emboli. So what happens is uh, you get this turbulent uh, but uh, low flow area in your atria and they, uh, that's a great place to create uh, clots. And if it's the right atrium, you're going to get a PE. If it's the left, then you can get a uh, stroke. So that's the main th reason that we worry about it and the main reason we treat it 
especially with anticoagulation. That's going to be what most of your AFib patients are going to be on. But you also uh, use beta blockers to joxin and calcium channel blockers for rate control. And if we catch it early, um, then that's when we start thinking about cardioversion. So procainamide or sotalol are used for uh, medical cardioversion, and you can also do electrical cardioversion. But what do you want to worry about when you're doing cardioversion? Emboli, of course, because if you have this uh, clot that's sitting in your atria and the atria has not been contracting, then we suddenly start squeezing it again and we start squeezing these clots out and they go to your heart or they go to your lungs or, or your brain. Of course, they could go anywhere else too, but those are the, the areas that will kill you the fastest. So the angry brother of AFib is a, it's going to look like it, at least in symptoms and a little bit on the EKG too. Differences on the EKG is we're going to have a little bit more of a rhythmic look to the P waves. And um, this is going to be a little bit slower of a rate, so uh, so under under 300 of a, of an atrial rate. But though the the atria uh, are uh, conducting a slower wave or a yeah a less frequent wave, we're going to get more frequent ventricular contractions because more of those atrial waves are going to go through and uh, cause a ventricular contraction. So some of the complications with this include the emboli that we're worried about with the AFib, but we also can get ischemia and heart failure because your heart is working really hard. And um, the treatment is similar, um, but we're this is not going to be the type of thing that we just don't worry about on the long term like like AFib we sometimes will anticoagulate and forget about but uh, but this is something we want to tr try and take care of because it will cause heart failure. Multifocal atrial tachycardia I couldn't find a good uh, picture of this but if you can imagine uh, an EKG with three distinct P waves uh, on a on a regular 10 second rhythm strip, then um, you, you can picture just different parts of the atria uh, acting as a pacemaker. And so each of these waves is coming through and some of them are, are translating into uh, ventricular rhythms and some are not. And so we get a irregularly irregular rhythm, uh, much like in AFib. But this is usually found in COPD patients, and I don't know why, so if you do know, please uh, please leave a comment for me so I can understand that. Uh, but the treatment for it is verapamil and uh, treating the underlying condition, which is usually COPD. So supraventricular tachycardia. Uh, any, any of the ones that we've talked about so far actually could could be classified as supraventricular tachycardia if they are tachycardic because it's just any heart rhythm that origi originates above the ventricle. So to treat this, uh, we're going to correct any electrolyte ab abnormalities that could be causing it, but uh, vagal maneuvers are going to be uh, one of the mainstays of treating it. These are going to be uh, people who have these SVTs um, and can be taught how to do vagal maneuvers in order to, to break the SVT. And so that can include carotid massage or uh, Valsalva maneuver or um, also can, can be like uh, getting in a, a bath of cold water or something like that. And if that's not going to work, then we can use adenosine, which I think is about 80% effective in breaking SVTs. And VTAC, this is when we start to get even scarier. The VTACs are um, scary because they can uh, progress to VFib. So the, the VTAC is when we're going to have... Uh, 
these uh, extra beats, um, at least three of them in in a ten second ry uh, rhythm, and uh, and this is going to be going on for more than thirty seconds. Is the is the technical definition of VTAC? So the treatment um, is uh, amiodarone or lidocaine if these are asymptomatic patients. But if they are hypotensive or we can't find a pulse, then that's when we're going to defibrillate. Then V-fib uh, is the more serious step uh, in this process. And this is when we've got a ventricular rate that is so fast that uh, we don't get any ejection of blood. And uh, really, it's just a, a quivering heart. So what does it look like? Well, it looks like uh, somebody dropping on the ground, and they uh, they lose their blood pressure. They don't have any pulse, and if you don't do anything about it, then then they're basically dead. And the treatment for this is uh, electric uh, counter shock. So uh, you'll learn this in your in your uh, ACLS class, but. As we're doing, we do the electric shock, and then we're going to be administering amiodarone or lidocaine uh, as we do it, and then we'll uh, and then we'll wait and shock again. So uh, I wanted to give a plug for this video. It's one of my favorite uh, demonstrations of cardiac arrhythmias. If you just go to YouTube and search cardiac arrhythmias, there is a, a video here of a guy who does a great uh, demonstration of how different arrhythmias look. And uh, so you ought to check that one out. The All the images that I used here are uh, either Creative Commons license or in the public domain. Uh, here's, the, here's where I found them all. And uh, please comment below to help me make these better. The idea is to make this basically a online review course for uh, step two and step three of the boards. So uh, let me know if there's anything important that you think I left out or uh, any changes that I need to make note of or any errors that I made. Thank you. I appreciate it.